Hello subscribers, welcome new subscribers who's following, sharing, liking our videos. You can count, follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, my name is Revan Penelope Stewart. Today I wanted to come here and talk to you about my emotional healing journey. It's been a while since I come here and shared a little bit about my journey with you. I've been coming to the channel doing book reviews and things like that, but I have not come here and share with you about my emotional and spiritual healing journey, which has helped me level up on a spiritual level every day, tapping into more spiritual uh, inner strength, uh, spiritual power. Uh, I can't emphasize the importance of the healing journey. It's been very, very uh helpful more than helpful on my journey with spirit and so i wanted to uh come here and talk about when i first began my healing journey how was it for me uh and and something that you might be experiencing as well i know a lot of us don't talk about this on our platform uh you know a lot uh, especially on our spiritual journey and it's all in the same it's all together uh, it's all about growth, spiritually growing up, becoming emotionally mature, uh, becoming more compassionate, gaining those spiritual principles in our lives to enrich our relationships. So for me, when I first began this journey, uh, again, I had to look at my mind and the way I was thinking. So a lot of shifting in my perspective and what I thought about myself had to change for my reality to get begin to uh, change around me because I wanted to manifest. That was the thing for me. I want to manifest. I want to manifest this beautiful reality, this, uh, you know, just this beautiful life for myself. And that had to begin with my thinking. And that began with what I thought about myself. And so when I first got into the Know That Self program, we have to focus on ourselves. We're no longer manipulating people, places, or things or trying to control outside events, uh, the codependency, going out of my way to help other people. All that stuff had to end. It had to go. I had to uh, and turn that all on and helping me because, again, I got myself in these tough spots and I really needed to work out how did I get myself, what type of behaviors and mechanisms was I told him to get myself in these, these tough cookies and make me feel bad about myself. Why, why did I not love myself? And so throughout the day, I would listen to myself, listen to my mental dialogue about my judgments and perspectives of things I thought about. And what I noticed about myself is I berated myself. I was so critical of myself. But yet I thought I loved myself. I thought I really loved myself. But when I really started listening to how I judge other people or how I judge other circumstances, my perspective was very limited. And I didn't know how limited it was until I started thinking. Uh, and then when I got to the, the, the core of where this thinking came from, this cr inner critic that told me, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, who do you think you are? You're going to do that. Oh, you're not worthy. Who do you think you are? You know, just all this. Oh, you made a mistake. Look at you. Just stupid. You just you just just you just not, not going to make anything of yourself. Just all this critical thinking, all these, you know, what ifs. And then I lived in a lot of what ifs. What if something bad happened? What if that happened tomorrow? I, I a lot of fear came from the future. When I started thinking about it, it was always worrying about tomorrow instead of staying present in today. Uh, I had a lot of fear going on, a lot of critical thinking. And when I think about it, I just created this monster in my mind. I just created this monster in my mind to give myself hell every day. And I know, you know, some of you may be experiencing this. Some of you may not. Uh, maybe not as intense uh, to a certain extent, depending on... Uh, the level of healing that you have to do or how much abuse you have uh, experienced in your life, you know, uh, it, it, it just depends. It depends on this inner critic. And so with my inner critic, I had to really practice a lot of self-love. I had to stay in my own lane, you know. That's that's something too, because when you first start standing in your own line, you see how hard it is, and you really get a chance, the opportunity to look at yourself and look at some behaviors 
uh, that are very compulsive and impulsive that you need to address. Uh, so giving myself the self-love and saying it's okay, uh, sitting in those uncomfortable emotions and learning how to soothe and myself and process my own emotional uh, energies. I had to learn how to do that even when it was uncomfortable. Journaling about those feelings when I was very, very angry. Um, or when I was displeased or depressed or sad, journaling, really trying to figure out why am I feeling this way? Where is this coming from? And they kind of play like old tapes in my head. It was like set on automatic, you know, just automatic stuff that was just bringing me down. So lots of affirmations, self-love, self-forgiving, because I learned that I wasn't, because I wasn't forgiving others, I wasn't forgiving myself. You know, that if you're not forgiven, uh, and I'm not saying you're going to forgive everything overnight. It may not happen overnight. You know, it's like that for me. I'm able to forgive things in small proportions. And in doing so, I'm able to forgive myself and let go of resentment. You know, so think about that too. Are you, are you really forgiving yourself? Are you really forgiving the situation and other people? Because what I've learned, too, people are only doing the best they can with the knowledge that they have. I didn't have good modeling, emotional modeling, uh, coping, you know, uh, coping with my emotion and dealing with uh, things that affect me psychologically. I didn't have good role models for that. And so a lot of us don't have good role models for that. And we're doing the best we can with the knowledge and awareness that we do have. And knowing that you were doing the best you could with the knowledge and awareness and role modeling that you had. We all are doing the best we can. You know, even when I look at uh, some of the trauma and abuse that I've experienced, what helped me forgive is knowing that these people, they were actually doing the best they could with what they had. They had experienced abuse in, too. They didn't know anything about healing. They were very unaware that all of this stuff was playing out in them and they were hurting other people. They were doing what they thought was right. No matter, and that's a hard pill to swallow. I'm not saying you have to swallow this pill overnight, but at some point you're gonna have to address it. Uh, I had to address the part two that I wasn't a victim, that I was a real willing participant in some of the things that I experienced. I'm not saying all the things that I experienced, but some of the things I experienced, filtering through that, you know, uh, and slowly I began to release some of those behaviors, that videotape, that those tapes don't play as much as my head uh, when I start the affirmations. Did that happen overnight? No, I had, it was consistent. I had to listen to affirmations in the morning when I got up, sometime when I went to bed, um, uh, when I start to think, saying the affirmations out loud when I'm thinking negative or start to pray right instantly uh, for my spirit guides, my ancestors, my higher power to start shifting my thinking to th look at things from a better perspective. Uh, getting a gratitude list together and being stand in the now because I projected into a what if. I was a what if person and I had to start telling myself, okay, what if something beautiful happened? You know, I was a doomsday, fearful type of person. We're always worried about tomorrow or about instead of staying in the now, you know, because I can have I, I can do some about now. My behavior and all of that is projecting the now. And so tomorrow is going to be all right if I stay in the now. And so I know it's hard uh, come back to those critical thoughts uh, for me that it was, it was the critic that was. That was the breakthrough I needed to get to the next level in my healing experience to really gain more healing is battling, battling, battling those critical, critical thoughts, reaching out to people, talking to people uh, when those thoughts got too intense, uh, writing affirmation, you know, writing affirmations, saying affirmations, uh, listening to affirmations. Uh, really stop that critical, you know, it's less 
than what it used to be now. I can instantly stop it. I have more control over it now. So my healing journey uh, for me was the old beliefs, the old uh, tapes that were playing out in the family, the old abusive phrases, uh, some memories as well. But I've, I've went back and did some meditation, visual meditation practices to really help with some of the memories as well. So that really helped me a lot when I first began the program, the Know Thyself program. But first I had to get to know me, uh, self-love, self-forgiveness, self-acceptance, uh, which that's, it's, it's not easy in the verse beginning. I'm not going to tell you that it is easy. It suck in the beginning because you, you, you become aware of all these old tapes and it's overwhelming um, to see all this stuff going on with you that you just was not aware of. So it was overwhelming at first, but uh, after I can get a hold of the critical thinking and putting myself down and loving myself and um, giving myself self-forgiveness and uh, self-acceptance, it, it, it was a light at the end of the tunnel. And it is one for you, too. It is one for you, too. So these are the things that I experienced uh, the first time on my healing journey when I first created the spiritual principles in the Know Thyself program. Was it hard? Yes, it difficult. I cried. I journaled. I read uh, to process all those emotions, uh, purge some of those toxins by crying exercise and getting the energy out of the body that that is a good thing too so if you haven't been exercised you need to get the energy out you need to burn up burn it out of your body by exercising as well and listening to those affirmations uh, uh spending some time in nature and just uh calling in those those healing energies from nature has helped me too so yeah it, it you know loved one it does seem bad right now if you just started your shadow work, if you just start your healing work. It does seem like hell right now. But I tell you, you're going to be so proud of yourself when you purge a lot of those impulses, uh, compulsions, and behaviors. You're going to feel a lot better. You're going to feel prouder of yourself. And you're going to go to the other side of this. And that's when you start typing into your, your you know, powerful creative potential. So I just wanted to come here and share some inspiration, some empowerment with you and my healing journey with you. And I'll be coming back here more uh, sure, and sharing with you some of the things that you may be experiencing on your healing journey. And no, uh, it doesn't mean that you're not making progress. In fact, you are making progress. And uh, it will seem to get a, a little worse before it gets better because your awareness is growing and you have to be very gentle with yourself. So light, love, namaste, loved ones. May the ancestors be with you and I'll stay tuned. I'll be seeing you soon.